I've had loads of you guys ask me how to get unlimited units on Napoleon Total War or 200 units or 100 units and today I'm going to give you a quick tutorial to show you how to do that. It's very very easy although there are some caveats that you'll have to work around and what you want to do is open your browser type in ESF editor you want to look for this one ESF total editor now if you can't find that in your browser that's fine I've got a link in the description just use that and when you get onto this page this is what it will look like uh, the total war center forum there's no complicated download process all you do is click this download button here and it will pop up in your downloads file all right and when you click on this here this will open up this is your zip file opener uh, I recommend just getting the WinRAR file opener, it's free, you don't have to pay for anything if it asks you to. And so you'll have your ESF total editor here and you want to go to extract and I've just created ESF folder. So once you've opened your ESF editor, you'll see that you've got a lot of uh, different options. You want to click the editor release, click on ESF editors and then you want to click the, any of them, click the current one and open that right now. And it's the easiest thing to do is just to save it onto your taskbar. Um, it's way easier than going through this whole process is what I've done. So go into Napoleonic Total War or whatever mod you're using. Campaign, whatever campaign you want. Let's just go for uh, Switzerland. As you can see, we are in regular game and I want to save the game. Swiss Confederation Test 1. Okay, you can call it whatever you want. You can keep the same name. Um, but make something obvious so it's the uh, one you saved originally. Now I want to come out back to main menu. I always find it's just a little bit easier to do that. Open save game, make sure you click all files and you're in Napoleon. Save games. Uh, it's Swiss Confederation test one. Open that up. You'll see here on the screen there's two options. You've got your save games and you've got your values over here. You click save games. Then you click campaign save game, campaign ENV, campaign model down here. Click on campaign model and you'll see two numbers here. The first one is your land units and the second one is your naval units and that's the maximum you can have in an army. So you want to click on this, double click and you want to put your value in. Let's just say 100, press enter. This has gone bold and italic. That means something has been changed, but hasn't been saved. So what you want to do, is you want to go save Swiss Confederation or save as something else. But at, since it's a test, we'll just save it and it, it collapses everything like that. Go back into Napoleon, load gain options. There's the Swiss, we'll load that in. And now you can tell it's definitely changed, even though I haven't got a max unit because you can see how low that number is there. This bar here, if you don't know, represents how many units are in the game. Now, you have to be aware there are some caveats to this. So far, in every campaign I've done with 100 units, the AI has not responded well. They like to basically, instead of doing anything at all, what they'll do is they'll go back to their main start province, Paris for the French, for example. They'll pull all their armies out, sit in Paris, and what they'll do is stay there on the defensive. I don't know why they all do it. There's no aggressive movements, movements from the AI. I don't think the AI knows how to respond to this. It may get, be getting confused. Maybe it's like, I only have one army. That means I must be played defensive, even though that army is 200 units in size. And so the problem I'm having really is that you can't really play an aggressive campaign with the AI coming at you. Everyone's playing defensive. So you can have those epic 100 versus 100 battles, but you'll always find you'll have them around the province of the enemy or the AI. So this is my Austrian campaign just before I fight the final battle. The French have basically pulled all their units from everywhere and they've dumped them here. So here come the French to attack us. They'll attack us if we go into their land. So you will get a good battle, but let me just show you a couple of things that go wrong. Now it's also important that you let the AI attack you. Uh, I know that sounds stupid, but unfortunately, with so many units, the AI has no idea what to do with them. The AI is completely useless attacking whilst it's being a defender. And so what will happen is the AI will just sit statically in the center and won't do anything. And that's what's happened to me before, unfortunately, when the AI plays its defensive role. As you can see, we're all set up down here. The AI 
land you in the game by putting most of your units on the flanks uh, like this as you can see it's always stacked up now the problem is the AI also spawns in the same way it doesn't necessarily spawn all nicely laid out like I'm about to do what it will do is it will spawn in very much a clustered up on the flanks uh, unfortunately that's just the way it is also artillery seems to be particularly buggy with the AI doesn't seem to know what to do with it and so you often find yourself not facing any artillery and sometimes you will it's just very much a, a game you have to play depending on how it feels that day as you can also see when I'm trying to deploy units sometimes we'll have a little bit of a glitchy mess let's select four units now try and deploy them in a straight line and as you can see it leaves this huge gap in the middle and it's very frustrating when you're trying to deploy anything remotely um, whether that's just me whether that's you I have no idea as you can see it's very very frustrating when you're trying to deploy things and you may say well why can't you group things together but the more groups you have the more likely it is to crash I'll do a demonstration of a crash test in a minute once we get the game going but anyway you'll start off with most of your infantry on the on your flanks like this and basically you want to just spread them out just get them all out in the open and you want to select all your infantry here to drag them out like this so you can kind of see what you've got as you can see your taskbar at the bottom of the screen goes off the screen unfortunately with this mod it hasn't got an uh, updated ui for 40 units or 100 units and so you're not going to better see anything and so having uh, your eyes on the battlefield is really really important so when you start your battle you may experience some initial lag as you can see and there's the french we've actually deployed pretty fun pretty well but you can see that the lag starts to really hit home now the ai will deploy randomly but you always know it's going to deploy heavily on the flanks it seems to have deployed a lot of cavalry in the center this time as you can see some of the units are flickering as well you'll see this flickering what that basically is their unit is disappearing but their backpacks are staying and what you want to do oh my gosh i've completely missed this entire unit here oh my gosh i knew i was <laughs> okay Oh my gosh, I just lost like 50,000 men. Reassessing my own edit again, actually, I think they are deployed. But as you can see, if I zoom in right now on this, you can see there's that line there, which I thought initially when I was recording this was cavalry. And there are cavalry in it. I think there's horses in it, but it's not cavalry, it's infantry. For some reason, all the infantry are packed into those two ranks. And so what happened is at the start of the game, they just exploded <laughs> which is kind of funny but it's so stupid all right let me show you an example of what happens if you put your guys into groups say you want to put this division into a group okay now you think oh look at that that's fantastic yeah sure you might better group one unit let's try and group another section here shall we oh look that works rather well so you'll start to see third group it's going well so far but you start to see the gaps it's random so far i've done pretty well i've managed to group three sections they've gone rather well but if one unit routes out of these i found that they it breaks the game let's try and group another section together all right see the gaps getting bigger let's try and group the artillery together you see i've already lost like four artillery units they've already gone off the game and there we go game's crashed so that's why you can't group units in games it's random sometimes it takes one group to crash sometimes it takes four but eventually it will crash the worst part about this game is um, especially with mods like napoleonic total war 3 is that you spend two hours fighting a 200 unit battle and then it crashes because you group something right at the beginning it's really dumb so unfortunately you just can't group it whether that's the case in mods that have a 40 unit taskbar at the bottom it may work better but for napoleonic total war 3 and the vanilla game at least grouping units whilst having 200 of them in your army or 100 depending on your preferences isn't going to work i find the sweet spot maybe less than 100 i mean the problem with it as you saw there is the arrows is completely useless and so yes it is cool but it's only cool when you get a good battle like that battle was just terrible so i found the best way is 75 to 150 units in your army i hope you enjoyed that please leave a like uh, and subscribe 
for more content i'm going to be putting out a lot more amazing battles soon just uh, have fun with it i hope you enjoyed this tutorial <laughs>